Hi friends, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, I said in my last video, which was a Stranger Things 3 themed video, that I was going to do my own Stranger Things 3 themed video. Well, I lied. Um, see, I've thought about this, and I actually don't really have anything else to say about Stranger Things Season 3. Like, looking back at the video, I feel like I said everything that I needed to share with the internet. So, instead, in this video, I'm going to talk about multiple different topics, including an update on my failed Stranger Things 3 prediction bingo sheet. Because I know that the majority of you who are subscribed to this channel are here for Stranger Things and IT content, which I appreciate tremendously because uh, those are my two favorite things and I love talking about those things. But um, I don't want to only produce content that's about those things, especially because that would be difficult um, because the content is very sparse. But I like other things too. <laughs> I just saw some movies, I'm reading some books. And I want to chat about them today, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put Mr. Mind Flare over here. We love a starring role. Alright, let's give an update on the bingo sheet to start this off. I'm gonna start off with the Stranger Things content, because I did pretty badly. My predictions were pretty much wrong. Um, if you want to see what all my predictions were, go check out the other video. I'm just gonna briefly, briefly go over the things that I kind of got right. Um, so... Will catches a break, got a point for that, kinda. He didn't really do much, so I feel like that counts as catching a break, even though he was still sad and miserable because Will Byers can't be happy. Um, lots of Dustin and Steve, that was very correct, but that was kind of a no-brainer. Um, lots of plot stuff happens at the mall, that was correct. Once again, not like a crazy theory that y'all should applaud me on. Um, Jopper happens, kinda. We're not gonna talk about it. I'm Eleven Fluff, we've been new. This was the one that were like was probably the most correct. Like it's the no biler but potential like gay development for Will. Uh, the line that when Mike was like, "It's not my fault you don't like girls." We're getting close, okay? You know, someday, <laughs> someday we will get the gay co Will Byers content we deserve. And he will be happy. Today is not that day. Uh, more character themed plot points. Got that right, because of the stuff with Eleven and like Nancy and Jonathan at work and I don't know. And then my bonus one that no other experiments. Also kind of a no brainer. So basically, this, uh, my theories were kind of pointless. My like actual theories weren't correct. Uh, so once again, Stranger Things just. But yeah, I liked Stranger Things 3 a lot. I liked it a lot. But I also have serious thoughts about Stranger Things Season 3, so if you want to go see what I thought of it, my little 2am review with my friend Chloe, which was the last video I uploaded on this channel before this one. It is storming. Oh my god, also, if my hair looks wet, it's because I got caught in the end of a thunderstorm coming home from the movie theater where I saw two films which I want to just talk about briefly today. I didn't want to make whole videos about these movies because that's not like the audience of my channel, I don't think. You know, like I've been trying to branch out. I made a Doctor Sleep video. I made a video about Dan Howell's coming out because that was just very, a very su substantial thing in my life that I needed to vent about. Um, but yeah, I saw Midsummer and I saw Child's Play. So I just wanted to give my thoughts on those films because, you know, they're horror films. My opinions might appeal to you folk, you Stranger Things and It fan folk, because genre, maybe, I'll influence you to go see these films. Um, so Midsummer, I'm scared to talk about this. This is not going to be a very long review because... Uh, if I say, like, anything about this movie, it's gonna just spoil it. But Midsummer was uh, a new horror film by the director of Hereditary. I am blanking on his name, but if you have seen Hereditary, you know what you're in for. Hereditary is great. I've seen it, like, three times. Um, that's a pretty, pretty scary film, in my opinion. And, uh, me personally, I love movies that 
where something like really fucking creepy is going on, something weird is going on, and the entire time you're just like, what the fuck is happening? That's my idea of a good time. And this movie delivered on that. Basically, it's about this girl named Danny. Um, something bad happens to her family, and she is in this kind of bad relationship with this guy named Christian. Like, they've been together for, like, four years, but she feels like she's really overbearing and that he's not really there for her, even though she has all these, all these anxiety issues and stuff. And then he feels like their relationship isn't working out and that, like, his friends are like, yo, like, she's the worst. She's boring. You need to break up with her. And so basically what happens is that, um, this couple and Christian's three friends, they go on the- three? Three friends? They go on this trip to Sweden with one of Christian's Swedish friends who's like, yo, we're having this midsummer celebration. It only happens every 90 years. It'll be super fun and fresh. You guys should come. One of the guys wants to write, um, a thesis for college on this, like, culture and stuff and he's like yo you guys should come and we'll experience it and we'll have fun so these folks go to sweden to this really remote uh village in sweden where this guy is where this guy is from and weird shit starts happening it's a cult movie that's all i'm gonna say that's not a spoiler because like you really get that like, that's very apparent in the trailer, and also if you just look at, like, the little two-line synopsis anywhere on the internet, it's a cult movie. Um, it has, it definitely had, like, the vibe and the presence of Hereditary, like, that very distinct, um, feeling. Like, it was just very unsettling, very creepy. I love that shit. I was, like, the only person in the theater with one other person, so it was just very uneasy and unsettling the entire time. Uh, I had a good time. It was the kind of thing where it's like that movie could have gone on for like three more hours and I still would have been on the edge of my seat. Like I was here for it. I was like the entire time I was like I want to know what's going on. This is crazy. All this crazy shit is happening. It was insane. If you liked Hereditary, if you liked just the ridiculousness of Hereditary, I definitely recommend Midsommar. Go give it some love. I feel like it's gonna get some, um, award show love because it was very, very well done, um, just like on the cinematography side, and yeah, it was a good time. The second film was Child's Play, which is technically a remake of the various other Child's Play movies from the 70s, 80s, 80s, 90s, one of the two, but this one is special and this one's important because Mark Hamill voices Chucky and I am a Mark Hamill stan. <laughs> I love Mark Hamill. If you didn't, if you don't know because you're living under a rock, uh, Mark Hamill is Luke Skywalker and he's also the best iteration of the Joker ever. Ever. I'm sorry. Literally fight me, Heath Ledger stands. Mark Hamill is the best Joker. No one will ever be better than Mark Hamill's Batman the Animated Series Joker, especially, but he voices lots of different Jokers. This doesn't matter. Point is, Mark Hamill is a legend and an icon, <laughs> and the, he's, the, he's amazing, and he voices Chucky, and it's iconic. So this movie actually surprised me a lot. Um, I haven't seen Chucky in any of the Chucky movies in a hot minute. Because Chucky was the first horror movie that I ever saw. I saw the first Chucky when I was 10 at my friend's house because it was on TV. Great time. Um, I remember thinking it was really silly. Like, even as a 10-year-old, just being like, this is freaking stupid and not scary. Um, but then obviously, technology has evolved. Uh, and this movie definitely, like, had some good scary moments. Uh, but uh, yeah, like, I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I expected to. Because like I said, I just kind of went because Mark Hamill is a legend. And I want to support everything that he does. Um, but it was very good. It was like a Black Mirror type Chucky movie. Because it was like this new doll system called Buddy. Um, that was connected to, it was made by this big, like, Apple-esque company that owned all this different technology, like TVs and computers and cell phones and cars and automated vacuum cleaners, like, all, it was just like, this big technology company, and so basically you could get this buddy doll and it would connect to all these different things, so it could, like, control your TV, it could control, control your air conditioning, it could call you an Uber, it could do all this different stuff. So I'm like, I, I saw that element in the trailer and I was like, that's cool. 
that's like a Black Mirror-esque thing. Like, shit's gonna go wrong because this bitch is gonna be able to control shit in the house. And not exactly. Like, that wasn't, like, the main gag. And I feel like he didn't really... Like, there were certain parts of the movie where he was, like, controlling television screens and stuff, but that wasn't the main gag. And I actually think that it was good because of that. Like, I think it took a lot of, like, traditional horror elements instead of just focusing very heavy on, like, the technology aspect. Like, obviously, he still had the cameras and his eyes, and he still had the recording um, devices, which did come into play. I also thought the kid was great. Like, the main kid, Andy, which, first of all, this movie released the same weekend as Toy Story 4, and as promotion, they were releasing a bunch of different posters for Child's Play that was Chucky destroying the toys from Toy Story, which was genius, and not to mention the kid's name in the movie is Andy. Like, that's, that's, that's brilliant, I'm sorry. Like, some people may think that's stupid and pandery, but I think that that is fucking hilarious. That they coordinated this movie to release at the same time as Toy Story 4 and named the kid Andy. Like, that's fucking brilliant. Um, but yeah, the kid was great. I liked the mom a lot. The mom was one of the chicks from Parks and Rec. Um, the friends, I thought, were, like, ridiculously useless. Like, that, I think, is, like, my only critique, is that his little friends in his apartment building, like, came out of nowhere and just were just kind of there like as plot devices and it seems like a lot happened like beyond this behind the scenes that we didn't see um like I thought the cop like the detective guy was a good character and his mother and I think that it could have like I guess like having the kids was like for a plot device for like later I don't know I could have done without them but yeah, I don't know. Those are my thoughts on the movies. I thought they were both really, really good. Uh, I would see them again. I was surprised by both of them, I guess, because they weren't, like, ones that I've been, like, looking forward to for months, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go see those. It was just kind of like, yo, I'm gonna go to the movies, and I'm gonna see these movies. I was also the only person, except for one other person, in, um, in Child's Play, and I, I'm like... <sighs> I'm the most awkward person ever. So, like, I went into this theater, and I got my ticket for Midsummer. I went into Midsummer, whatever. Then when I'm, when Midsummer's over, I come out. <laughs> so the theater's like this, right? There's a wall, and there's, like, a barricade. And, the, and then there's, like, a passageway that goes out the door to the exit, and the entrance door is right there. And then you buy the tickets at concessions. So I come out of the movie theater, out the door, come back in the entrance door. These doors are glass. They can see me doing this and go back up to the concession stand where the same workers are and I'm like can I have a ticket for child's play <sighs> like I'm so awkward and not to mention I was wearing a joker hoodie to child's play where Mark Hamill is voicing the lead like I, I looked like such a dweeb and then like one of the guys at the concessions was like was like looking at me weird and I was like and he's like oh I was trying to figure out what your jacket was and I was like oh yeah it's Joker and now thinking back on that I'm like damn I look like such a dweeb going into child's play with a joker jacket like oh that was my movie experience um to close this out I'm gonna talk about some books I know what a boring individual who still reads I actually don't read that often which is really disgusting because I'm a writer and I really need to read but I used to read all the time in middle school like that was my favorite hobby and now I just feel like I have a really short attention span and that is probably due to the scientific properties of technology uh, but I just really can't do it anymore unless something really piques my interest so I've been reading a couple different books um so this one I've been reading for a while but I most read but like I'd only really started it a couple months ago, and now I, like, actually started reading it, and it is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This book is fantastic. Like, I am almost done with it. Neil Gaiman is the author of Coraline, if you did not know. I love Neil Gaiman. He just has a very good knack of, like, mystery, and, oh, this is just a great read. It's about imagination and childhood and, like, this boy who lives in like the middle of nowhere and he has these neighbors called the Hempstocks and they have this daughter named Letty and just magic shit happens. Demon nanny from hell named Ursula Monkton, which is the best name ever. It's a great time. I would recommend Alina's Book Club.
Um, the next one that I started is the Goldfinch. So this one I got because the film comes out in September. And if y'all know me, I am a fan of your boy Finn Wolfhard. And Finn Wolfhard is playing Boris in the Goldfinch. And that is very exciting. Um, so I've heard good things about this book. It's a Pulitzer Prize winner, so that's when you know it's good. Um, it's a very famous book. Uh, the trailer for the movie looks flippin' fantastic. It just looks so artistic and beautiful, and I'm ready for the Academy to just snatch it up. Um, Nicole Kidman is in it. Uh, Ansel Elgort. Like, it's gonna be a great time. I'm not that far into it, but it's basically about this boy who lives in New York, and he's, like, very close with his mother, and his mother dies in a bombing at a museum. And then, shit goes down. The boy has to deal with his traumas. And the goldfinch was the name of his mother's favorite painting in the museum where she died. Um, so it's a good time. It's not, like, the typical genre that I read. Like, this is kind of a mom book, you know? Like, it's one of those, like, my mom read it. Yeah, and, but I'm giving it a try because the movie looks fantastic, and I'm going to see anything with Finn Wolfhard in it. Like, y'all know I'll be there day one for Adam's Family. Like, good shit. Uh, then we got this one, which I have not started yet, actually, but I, I read multiple books at a time when I do read, because, like, it takes me fucking forever to read a book. Like, I might as well just, like, dabble in different ones. So I got Doctor Sleep, because, uh, if you watch my Doctor Sleep trailer reaction, the movie looks fucking great, and The Shining is my favorite movie. I have read the book, and so I thought it was only fair if I read the sequel before the movie comes out. Ah, uh, so this is a thick boy. So basically, I have to read this before September and this before November. Am I gonna do it? Let's hope so. And oh, what is this? What? what is this? I released a new book! Um, it has an ugly, not for resale stripe on the cover because it's a proof copy, but let's just ignore that. I released a new book. Yes, I'm aware that it's like the, the width of a penny, but it's a collection of short stories. So if you're new to my channel, you probably don't know about this child, even though she's in the description of every single one of my YouTube videos, even though I don't talk about her anymore. This is Demon High. This is my novel that I released when I was 15 years old. And to be honest, I kind of hate it. Like, if I, like, not like the story. Like, I like it, right? But I go to writing school now, and I consider myself a much better writer than I was when I was 15. So if I could rewrite this book, I absolutely would, and I probably will someday. But for now, this is it. She's available on everywhere, everywhere books are sold. So like Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the places. She's fun. If you're like 13, you like like horror elements, but you're not really ready for horror. You like high school drama. You like cool female characters. This is the one for you. It's a fun time. This bitch, however, is just a little sampling, and I think this is a better representation of what my writing is like now. So this is called The Hitchhiking Acrobat and Other Horror Stories. Wow, how many minutes have I been talking about this and I haven't even said the title? The Hitchhiking Acrobat and Other Horror Stories. So it is a collection of four short stories, except Wait a second, this paperback version, the paperback version has bonus features. You can get the ebook version of this little guy on Smashwords for any digital format or on Amazon for your Kindle. Fun times. That's $1.99 and has four stories in it, which are a murder, lion, no one will know, and the hitchhiking acrobat. However, if you get this paperback version on Amazon.com for $4.99, it comes with an extended version of a murder as well as a bonus story called Red Vines. Um, and Red Vines will also be available on Scarlet Leaf Review, which is a flash fiction short story uh, newsletter, magazine, site, place, next month. So if you don't want to get the paperback, you can read that on there. But the extended version of A Murder, which is the first story in this book, is only available on ye old paperback. So head over to Amazon for, to get that. 
for $4.99. Wow, I feel so professional. Look at me promoing shit. Um, but yeah, it's fun. I like it a lot. It's a collection of short stories, of horror short stories that I've written uh, in my time here at school. And I think it's pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I have to talk about today. That's my random recap of different things that have happened in the entertainment world. Um, it is upon us. It is so close. Speaking of which, I saw the IT trailer twice in the theaters today for both of the movies and the Doctor Sleep trailer for Child's Play. And like seeing both of those in the movie theater, like on the big screen. Oh, it made me so emotional. I'm so excited. Be waiting for the IT content. It is coming. Um, I made basically all the content that I can pre the movie. Oh, there's a new trailer tomorrow. Never mind. I'm probably gonna make a new video about the new trailer tomorrow, but other than that, there's nothing else that I can talk about before the movie's released, so be excited for my review. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. See you next time. Bye!